What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out huge return at WrestleMania 38. Uh oh, <laughs> Rollins blasts AEW. John Cena misses WWE and wrestling news, man. I know I've been hearing the reports, the rumors, the awful rumors that Shane McMahon is supposed to be making his return at this year's WrestleMania. Jesus Christ above, please, for the love that is all that's holy in this world, do not allow that to happen. Please, we, ah. Oh. Oh, my greatest fear is that Shane McMahon is the person that Seth Rollins fights at WrestleMania this year. When I tell you I may just turn off the show, I may just tell Brandon, hey, I'm done for the night and check out, legitimately check out, bruh, I may actually do it. That would be one of the worst booking decisions of all time so let's see if that's the rumor if that's what he's talking about i'm pretty sure that's who he's talking about appreciate all love and support oh let's get into this one it's wrestlemania here back with some more news join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know including another huge return at wrestlemania and <laughs> oh boy <laughs> Seth Rollins blast that's definitely AEW. who he's talking Backstage about heat between mjf and tony khan John Cena misses WWE and much more. That's Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification McMahon. bell for daily He's wrestling videos and follow us on Shane Facebook McMahon. for exclusive I'm lists. I'm willing to bet. Now let's see the intro and get straight I'm into our first story. I know it, it's, it's Shane McMahon. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is... Woo. Our first story looks at WWE's next Saudi show revealed. Atop of the news today is a potentially big story concerning the WWE's next super show in Saudi Arabia as it appears that WWE is bringing back TLC for its next Saudi event. Oh. Andrew Zarian of the Wrestling Observer Figure 4 Online is reporting WWE will be making its return to Saudi Arabia for a pay-per-view event this September where they're being indicated to us that the pay-per-view will likely be TLC 2022. Okay. This comes from the same source that indicated the first WWE pay-per-view in Saudi Arabia this year would be the Elimination Chamber. A specific date for the show has not been confirmed. This would be the first TLC pay-per-view since 2020 as no TLC event was held mm -hmm. in 2021. Now, if the report is accurate, it means that WWE will be holding two big events that month as the WWE reportedly has a premium event planned for the UK the same oh. weekend as AEW's Double or Nothing pay-per-view. Wow. Zaria noted, a previously reported pay-per-view event taking place in the UK during Labor Day weekend in September is also still happening. And now that the WWE's touring schedule is back in full swing following the ebbing of the pandemic, fans should expect to see the WWE booking its Saudi Arabia super shows on a regular basis. A rumor has it that the WWE may even run more than two shows in Saudi Arabia a year, mm. although the logistics of doing so could prove problematic due to the travel that. time to and from the Middle East. Just leave it at two shows An additional show could avoid the grueling travel if the WWE held a SmackDown and or Raw show in Saudi Arabia. They could do that. What do you think of TLC being held in Saudi? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, what's next for Stone Cold Steve Austin after WrestleMania? A Stone Cold Steve Austin's upcoming appearance at WrestleMania as a guest on The Kevin Owens Show has fans talking not only about what will happen this weekend, but whether it's the beginning of a longer stay for the Texas Rattlesnake. Our fans have heard rumors that Austin might stick around after Mania, but according to Ringside News' Steve Carrier, that's not so. Mm. WrestleMania is exciting because Steve Austin is coming back to WWE. The big question is how often fans will see him. We're told that, as of right now, Austin's WrestleMania appearance is a one-time only thing. Things could always change, but Mania looks like a one-off. Which it should be. You know, Steve, Steve Austin has retired. I know some of you guys have been like, Oh, how could you say you don't want to see Stone Cold wrestle one more time? I don't. It's not because I, it, you know, it wouldn't be cool to see. But at the same time, it's like, he's been gone for so long. And if if there was any other time he would have came back, he would have came back. I'm sure Vince McMahon has been throwing money at him for many, many years, and he hasn't came back. He felt like this was the appropriate time to come back, but honestly, he doesn't he doesn't need to be out here wrestling. You know what I'm saying? Maybe having some cool segments every now and then. But the thing is, I just feel like somebody's retired, let them be retired. If they want to come back to do a, a segment or something. Cool. If he feels comfortable enough to wrestle, 
Maybe, but ultimately, this is why you have your younger talent. They're supposed to be the ones carrying the company. We can't keep relying on people that we know, you know what I'm saying, that we cherish a lot. The Nostalgia Act. We can't keep relying on that. Because at the end of the day, people get older. Their bodies are not the same. They can't move the same. You know, it's it's it's, it's not going to be the same in the ring. You feel me? So I, I want... I want him to be at WrestleMania this year. I can't wait to see him. It's going to be a huge pop. I don't think he needs to be wrestling, but if he decides to, we'll see. But that's just my personal opinion. I think he's just better as a a one-off appearance or someone that pops up rarely, you know, every now and then. It makes it more special, if that's the case. That's always possible that Austin could change his mind after he makes his appearances. And as we've suggested in our WrestleMania news and rumors video, it's possible Austin is using this appearance as a test run for an extended run or even a match down the road. Maybe. Would you guys like to see Austin wrestle again? And if so, who should he wrestle? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, another huge return at WrestleMania. And will the WWE Universe here? Uh, here comes the money at this week's showcase of the Immortals. No. Well, that could be the case as PW oh, Insider's Mike Jesus Johnson is reporting Christ. WWE is bringing Shane be, McMahon yeah, in for WrestleMania 38 this oh, weekend. PW no. Insider.com has confirmed with multiple sources. There's no word at this time whether McMahon will be appearing on pay-per-view yet, but we are told he'll be in town for the entire WrestleMania weekend. As Shane was reportedly in the WWE doghouse after he helped book this year's Royal Rumble and was said to have put himself over a little bit too much, leading to a major spat with his father that led to Shane being sent home. Now this is interesting as there was wild speculation about whether Shane would even stick around in WWE. Now an even wilder story and brace yourself is a story making its way through the internet wrestling community no. that Seth Rollins' WrestleMania opponent will be revealed as Shane McMahon only for the WWE to swear the fans by having Cody Rhodes show up. Like, can you imagine the instant anger and disappointment from the crowd? It'd be unreal. I'm sure some of you would absolutely love it, but this kind of swerve could turn off viewers. Yes, that's the thing. I get it. They want to swerve, have people think he's going to come out and maybe come out Monday. But that type of swerve would not, I'm telling you this now, it would not work. You can have people say, oh, they never said it was going to be Cody. Why you guys assumed it was going to be Cody? That's your fault. No, bro. No one wants to see Shane McMahon. I'm sorry. No one's trying to see Shane McMahon. After what happened at the fucking Royal Rumble, we're not trying to see Shane. No. And Shane versus Seth? No. We don't, that's not a WrestleMania match. I don't care. No. No. Oh, they do that. That's them trolling the fans, swerving the fans, and they're they're just gonna get booed. They're they're that crowd, the WrestleMania crowd is going to shit on that show. Do not do that, please. But I have a feeling they will, bro. I have um I'm telling you, if they do that shit, there's a good chance I'll I I'll, I'll be done. I'll be like, yeah, I'm good. I, I may not want to watch the rest of the show because it's like uh, it's it's gonna really I'll say this. It would, it would definitely ruin my WrestleMania 38 experience. I would legitimately be so disappointed and annoyed. Next up, Seth Rollins blasts AEW. As Seth Rollins recently shared his thoughts on wrestlers from one promotion mentioning wrestlers from another promotion, and as far as he's concerned, it's something AEW should avoid. During an interview with the Sports Illustrated Media podcast, Rollins discussed how his mention of Dean Ambrose during Seth's program with Roman Reigns was necessary as all three men shared a deep bond as members of the Shield. Mm -hmm. To me, it's one of those things where if it's very useful, it's fine. The references you spoke of, Rollins mentioning Moxley, CM Punk mentioning WWE, are two kind of different things. I didn't use the reference to Mox to talk down to somebody. I wasn't trying to diminish anyone's accomplishments. It wasn't like that. He was part of our story. Roman wouldn't be the same if it wasn't for Mox and I. However, Rollins said AEW's hues hasn't been organic and in his opinion, downright tacky. Mm. The other side of that coin is the way that it can be used by those guys. They can do whatever they want. I find it very tacky and lowbrow personally. Mm. I think it looks and reeks of desperation. I don't think it's anything on our television show that we need to go there and talk down about those guys. They're doing their thing. They're doing it very well. We're very happy for them. I am at least personally. Are they on our level? No, they mm. have a long way to go to catch up to us. Mm. That's fine and they know that. They do things differently. From my perspective, it's a step down for us to use it as an insult. 
That's my perspective. Damn. People may not share that opinion. It'll be fascinating to see how the WWE utilizes Cody Rhodes when he returns to the company, especially in terms of whether they'll mention his time in the competition or gloss over it. What? Mm, that is, I like. That's some interesting words. I, I, I get, I get his, I get his perspective. I, I get where he's coming from. He feels like you know. There's been plenty of times where AEW has mentioned something on WWE to really pretty much talk down about the company. Whether there's some truth in what they're saying or not, that's up to people's interpretation. But I understand it. I get it. You know, he's like, yo, you know, I, we ain't got to stoop down to them. They're trying to get to where we are. And whether AEW fans want to admit it, AEW is trying to get where WWE is on a financial level for sure on a notoriety level for sure that's wwe is is the biggest wrestling company in the world so you want to get to that point so i understand but at the same time it's it's i don't think they do it in a sense where it's it's they need to like they got to do it to get ratings i know it, it it definitely creates some buzz um and i can see someone saying well why they got to mention wwe I understand that, but at the same time, it's it's all competition. You feel me? It's all competition, you know, and you know it it, it breeds that that competitive nature. Can you know if you start just constantly always bashing the other competition, then it kind of gets ri ridiculous. But at the same time, it needs to be like a fine balance. There's nothing wrong with sending jabs every now and then. It just shouldn't be a regular thing. What do you think of Seth's take? That's Let us know in the comments down below. Next thing. up, backstage heat between MJF and Tony Khan. Now is there heat between AEW's resident bad boy Maxwell Jacob Friedman and the promotion's president Tony Khan? While well, a rumor has been going around that MJF came under heat after an interview with Ariel Helwani, where wrestling Salt of the Earth discussed his AEW contract, a potential jump to the WWE, Cody Rhodes' AEW exit, and his friendship with Bruce Prichard. This led to what was described by various news sites as a heated exchange with one wild rumor stating it turned into a physical altercation. Hmm. First, let's take a look at an excerpt from MJF's interview. So when you're talented as over and as much of a draw as me, if I want to, I can bite off Tony Khan's fingers. He knows where his bread is buttered, and if that offends somebody in the locker room, which I know it does, oh well, cry about it. Get more over than me. Oh wait, that's right, you, you can't. Because I'm literally the best talker in the business and one of the best wrestlers in the history of the business, bell Bro, to bell. So a rumor has it MJF's comments he's themselves led to a asshole. spat with Tony Khan, not so much because of the comments themselves, but because Tony Khan had reportedly not given him approval for the interview, particularly MJF chatting about his contract and the WWE's interest in signing him. Like many a wrestling story, this one took a life on its own with rumors going so far that the two even got into a fight. However, Meltzer reported that no physical altercation occurred yeah, I, and the matter had been resolved. Nevertheless, there could be a bigger issue driving the alleged argument as Sean Ross Sapp reports the problem runs deeper than an interview. Sapp elaborated this in a backstage report audio saying, I know MGF is frustrated about his contract and he wants to be paid more and that's just the long and short of it. There are a lot of people that have come in after him that are getting paid way more. Mm. MJF has arguably become AEW's top heel Facts. and could be looking for more money in light of how much he has contributed to AEW's success. At the same time, MJF is known for working the fans and this could be another example of him blurring the lines True. between kayfabe and reality. True. Next if there's anybody that can blur the lines within an interview, is MJF. Him speaking that way, is he so fucking good, bro? He definitely deserves to be paid top dollar. He's the best heel. I'm going to be honest with you. I think he's the best heel in wrestling, bro. I like him better as a heel than Roman Reigns. He's the true definition of evil. He's the true definition of evil. And he does it so well to the point where people will pay top dollar just to see him get his ass kicked. So, I don't know, man. He definitely deserves a world champion ship at some point this year hopefully soon and he definitely deserves to be paid top dollar because he's, he's fantastic up john cena misses wwe now, john cena has been john. doing quite well for himself as an actor but believe it or not the 16 time world champion still misses his time as a wwe superstar the current star of the hbo max series the peacemaker definitely recently go check out told peacemaker. gq.com fantastic series. i miss it every day uh, oh, every fantastic single day show. but i'll be 45 on april 23rd and i was very fortunate to make it as long as i did with only a minor list of injuries 
Nothing that has changed the trajectory of my long-term health. I'm strong, flexible, and in good shape externally, internally. I think now being a full-time touring performer might start to hit that point of diminishing returns. Mm. And I have to be realistic when I look at that. That's true. good that Cena recognizes just how much he's accomplished and how he's better off doing what he's doing now rather than tarnishing his incredible legacy. And finally, the king is dead. And last but not least, the king is dead, long live the king. As Wrestling News is reporting that Xavier Woods, who won the 2021 King of the Ring tournament, had a slight change to his name following his recent return to SmackDown. A WWE has dropped the King Woods moniker, and he's back to being Xavier Woods. <laughs> the reason behind the name change is unknown, but knowing the WWE, it could be anything from Vince McMahon's cardio machine breaking down, to him <laughs> thinking fans would be confused by the presence of Jerry the King Lawler. Who the hell knows? But there you have it, folks. <laughs> all this new stories and room machine... Oh my god. So it pretty much <laughs> pretty much is Alright, well, you no longer the king, bro. <laughs> That's Xavier deserves better, bro. It's just uh you come back out, he ain't the king, bro. He, he's just Xavier now. That's so messed up, man. Oh bro. But yeah, comment down below. Let me know what's your thoughts and opinions on Seth Rollins' comments on AEW. Also, how do you feel about potentially ugh, <laughs> the uh, Shane McMahon coming back at this year's WrestleMania and maybe being Seth Rollins' surprise opponent? How do y'all feel? Will that upset you guys? Will you guys be indifferent to it? Will it cause you to say, you know what, I'm turning off WrestleMania, I'm done? Or will you be the small percentage of individuals that be like, yeah, yeah, we love this Shane versus Seth, let's go. <laughs> Comment down below, let me know, but I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 80K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.